Hello everyone, welcome to lectures by Aparna. This is the part 1 video of block diagram reduction. I have done a video on introduction to block diagram representation. If you are interested, you can check out its link in the description box just below this video. So let's move on to today's session. What is the purpose of block diagram reduction? Block diagrams are reduced to find the overall transfer function of the system. Let us see some rules that are used in block diagram reduction. In this part 1 video, I will be discussing two such rules and their proof. Because if you learn all rules together, it will be confusing. So I have divided it into parts. Let's see rule number 1. Rule 1 Combining the blocks in cascade. Consider two blocks having transfer functions g1 of s and g2 of s connected in cascade. For this combination, we will get output y of s as y of s is equal to g2 of s into z of s. Let this be equation 1. Now, z of s is equal to g1 of s into x of s. Let it be equation 2. Substitute equation 2 in equation 1. So we can write y of s is equal to g2 of s into for z of s substitute this value. So it will be g1 of s into x of s. So we can write y of s is equal to g1 of s into g2 of s into x of s. Let it be equation 3. Compare this equation with the standard output equation that is y of s is equal to g of s into x of s where y of s is the output, x of s is the input and g of s is the overall transfer function of the system. So when you compare these two equations you can see that this term is equal to g of s. So we can write g of s is equal to g1 of s into g2 of s here. That means you can represent two blocks in cascade as a single block with transfer function g1 of s into g2 of s. So we can reduce this into. So here two blocks in cascade have been reduced into a single block with transfer function g1 of s into g2 of s. Similarly, if there are n blocks in cascade, they can be represented as a single block which will be the product of transfer functions of all those n blocks. That is g1 of s, g2 of s up to gn of s in cascade can be reduced into a single block g1 of s into g2 of s up to gn of s. So this is the general form of rule number 1. Now let us see rule number 2. The parallel combination of blocks will be like this. For this combination, we will get output y of s as y of s is equal to y1 of s plus y2 of s. This will be equation 1. Since it is plus sign here, you can write it like this. If it is negative sign here, it will become y1 of s minus y2 of s. If it is minus sign here. So, so, you have to write it accordingly. But here it is y of s equal to y1 of s plus y2 of s. Where y1 of s is equal to g1 of s into x of s. Let it be equation 2. And y2 of s is equal to g2 of s into x of s. Let it be equation 3. Now substitute equations 2 and 3 in equation 1. So we can write y of s is equal to for y1 of s substitute this g1 of s into x of s plus for y2 of s substitute this that will be g2 of s into x of s. Therefore y of s is equal to g1 of s plus g2 of s into x of s. So I have taken x of s outside. Now again comparing it with the standard form of output equation that is y of s is equal to g of s into x of s. We will get 
g of s is equal to g1 of s plus g2 of s. That means we can represent the parallel combination of two blocks with a single block. And that single block will be the sum of transfer functions of those two blocks. So you can reduce this parallel connection into a single block like this. Similarly, if there are n blocks in parallel, you can reduce it as the algebraic sum of transfer functions of all those n blocks. Algebraic sum is important because if you see a negative sign here, it will become g1 of s minus g2 of s. So that's it. Rest of the rules we will discuss in the upcoming videos. If this video has helped you, please do subscribe to my channel. Also don't forget to like and share this video. Thank you.